Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to think about graphing surfaces by hand. We will use a computer to graph some surfaces, but there are some that are simple enough that you should be able to graph them by hand, just like you can graph some simple equations in R2 by hand. If I ask you to graph y equals x squared, you probably don't need a computer or graphing calculator to help you graph that. So the same kind of idea here. There's just some simple ones that you want to be able to do. Um, so I have an equation here that maybe you would recognize as the equation of a sphere. Uh, we did spheres earlier in the chapter, and so maybe you'd recognize that. And so a sphere isn't hard to graph, but I just want to use this kind of easy example to think about uh, how you might think about something if it were a more difficult equation. All right, so first of all, I recommend that you don't try to memorize a bunch of different forms for equations. There will be some that you will probably start to recognize because you've done them a few times, uh, but I would really say probably don't try to start memorizing forms. Instead, I would recommend that you start by thinking about graphing what are called the traces. Traces are cross sections of the surface that are in the coordinate planes. So there are really three of them. Not every surface actually passes through coordinate planes, but in general there are three of them to consider. Uh, there's the XY trace, so that would be the cross section where this surface passes through the XY plane, and so that would occur when Z is equal to zero. And then the XZ trace, that would occur where Y is equal to zero in the XZ plane, and then the, what are we left missing here, the YZ trace, and that would occur when X is equal to zero. So I'd recommend starting with those uh, different cross sections and traces that you're going to graph. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and write some work over here for this one. Uh, if I think about the XY trace when Z equals zero on this equation, I get X squared plus Y squared equals nine. So you get an equation in two variables. And then you can think about the little two-dimensional graph of that. So I'm just going to do a little two-dimensional sketch here in the XY plane of what that looks like. So that's a circle of radius three. Notice my picture here that I drew by hand is not a perfect circle. This does not have to be a work of art. Just a little sketch that looks like a circle. Uh, I'm going to do my other trace in a different color here, just so we have, uh, when I put them on the 3D graph, we can kind of see that. The XZ trace, that would be where Y is equal to zero. So I'm just going to put Y equals zero into the equation. And so I'll get X squared plus Z squared equals nine. That's also a circle of radius three in the XZ plane. So it's going to cross the Z axis at three and negative three and the x-axis at three and negative three. And then let's do one more here, the yz trace, that will be when x is equal to zero. So I'm just gonna put x equals zero in the equation and I get y squared plus z squared equals nine. So we get again another little circle here uh, and we're crossing the y and z axes at three and negative three. Okay, so I did those three traces, and notice I drew little two-dimensional graphs of those. What I'm really after here is the three-dimensional graph, so I'll go ahead and set up some coordinate axes down here. But doing the little two-dimensional sketches can help you think about how far your coordinate axes need to go. All of my traces uh, went from negative three to three on each of the coordinate axes. So when I set up my 3D coordinate system, I need all of my axes to go at least negative three to three. And I talked about in another video about how when you draw that scale in the direction of the axis that's coming out of the paper at you, sometimes it's helpful to sort of shorten that up a little bit. If you think about looking at a ruler from the end, uh, when you look at it from the end, those distances look smaller than they really are. So if you don't scale it that way in your picture, then things are gonna look kind of weird and stretched out. All right, so um, I'm also, as I draw these, going to, I'm going to use the same colors I did before. So uh, I prefer really to do the YZ trace first, since the Y and Z axes are in the surface of my paper. Uh, those tend to be kind of easy. So the X equals zero, one is the one I usually do first with the Y and the Z axes in the surface of my paper. That one's a pretty straightforward one here. So I'm just drawing that circle here. 
And then uh, it doesn't matter which of the other ones I do next. So uh, when I do z equals zero, so I have x squared plus y squared equals nine, that's gonna intersect the x and y axes at three and negative three. Notice I'm plotting these points also where those curve intersect the axes and then using that to kind of connect this. All right, on this one, uh, so we've got a sphere here. We already talked about that we knew what this shape looked like, but I'm gonna do something here on the back side of this circle that's really in the xy plane. I drew that dashed along the back there. That can help sometimes when you're trying to make something look 3D if you use um, curves that go along the back side or what would be behind the surface if you draw those with a dashed line. Sometimes that's helpful. All right, and then I still have one more to do here, the trace in the xz plane. So that is going to intersect the x and z axes at plus and minus three. So I'm putting those dots here on my x and z axes. That circle in the xz plane is coming out toward me, so it looks a little stretched along the back side. And again, I drew dashed lines along the back side on that. So that's not a bad picture. It looks kind of like a ball, a sphere, which is what we know this one is supposed to look like. Uh, the other thing I want to emphasize about this and just write one more word here uh, that I talked about. Uh, so I identified all of these points where the surface crosses the coordinate axes. When you do the traces, those probably will just fall right out of your work. Notice I got all those threes and negative threes from doing my traces. I just circled them all there. Um, but you can find those points separately. There are a few questions in the homework that ask you specifically to find the intercepts. And so you've got x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and z-intercepts. So I'm just going to label one of them here on the y-axis. So this is a y-intercept. So its coordinates will be 0, 3, 0. That crosses the y-axis there. And so if you wanted to just find the points, the intercepts, without finding the entire traces, notice that if I plug in x equals 0 and z equals 0 into the original equation, into the original equation of the sphere, I would get y equals plus or minus 3. So that would tell me both of those points where that curve crosses the uh, y-axis. Those are called, again, the intercept, just like uh, when you use x-intercepts and y-intercepts in a uh, two-dimensional graph. Intercepts. Those are my y-intercepts. I also have x and z-intercepts at plus and minus 3. All right, so I would graph the traces, and in doing that, you're also going to be finding the intercepts. Sometimes that's enough to get a decent picture. In this case, this was a pretty simple surface, and so that was really enough. That looks okay, like a sphere. I think most people would be able to look at that and say it looks like a ball. And especially if you pay attention to the scale on the axes, you can see that it's the same distances in the x, y, and z directions, and so a sphere. Um, so sometimes that's enough, but sometimes when you do your traces, it's not quite enough to really make the shape look like what it's really supposed to look like. So I'm going to put here, if necessary, I don't think we need to do it on this one, but we will on some other ones. Uh, you can do more cross sections, so just two-dimensional curves. And you'll do that by just plugging in sort of convenient numbers for x, y, and z. So at x equals some constant, or y equals some constant, or z equals some constant. And so maybe several of those. We'll look at some examples later in some of the later videos where we have to do that in order to get the whole graph. We don't really need that here. And then the third thing I would suggest uh, if you want, again, this is kind of optional, uh, but you can use some features to make the graph look more 3D. I actually used one of them here. So one of them that I would say sometimes helps is using dashed uh, edges on some of the curves that are behind. Another thing that you can do, and I'll go ahead and add them to this shape, although I don't think we necessarily need that, is that you can do contour lines or grid lines uh, to make the surface look 3D. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So there's different ways you can do that, but I like to just draw some uh, contour lines along the surface that are parallel to the cross sections that would be in the front. So I'm just drawing some curves here, kind of parallel to what would look like the equator 
of this sphere and I'm just doing it on the front side here and so that makes this surface look a little bit more rounded. If you think about a globe and those lines going across the globe so those would be uh, lines of uh, latitude and then these ones maybe would be lines of longitude. So I drew some contour lines here both vertical and across to kind of help make that look 3D so that's optional. Uh, if you have a pencil it's a little bit hard to do with ink but if you have a pencil another thing that you can sometimes do is some shading uh, and some of you that are very artistic might really enjoy doing that shading to make the surface look 3D. Uh, I would say all those things are really optional. I think even before I did any contour lines here, the graph that we had looks like enough like a sphere that somebody would be able to look at that and say, oh yeah, that looks like a ball and I can see where it crosses the X, Y, and Z intercepts. Okay, look at some more videos where we're going to look at some more uh, difficult surfaces. So some are pretty easy, some are pretty hard, but be sure to watch all those next videos so that you can especially do the more difficult ones.